In this video, I'm going to share the top three anxieties around DM outreach that most every single person I've ever come across faces when they get into the DMs to do some outreach and actually build business and what to do about them. This one's going to be valuable. Stay tuned. What's up, Flowjack Connector? Sean back at you with another high ticket tune up. Hope you're doing really well. Don't forget to smash that like button, share this out to somebody who needs it. And of course, if you find some value throughout this session, please smash that subscribe button, smack it, kick it, push it right? Want to get more traditional salespeople to suck less at sales. That's my mission in life. So I just want to share that with you. So let's get into it today. We're going to talk about some cool stuff. We're going to bring out Yoda and let's get into the top three anxieties around DM outreach and what to do about them. Really excited about this one. Really, really valuable here. Here we go. All right. So what is the first anxiety? What does it even mean, Sean? What are you talking about? Well, the first major anxiety that most people face is intrusiveness and intrusiveness concern. They don't want to feel like they're intruding on other people. The top worry on most prospects' minds is being seen as invasive or annoying. Nobody wants to be annoying or feel annoying to others. DM outreach is a personal form of communication, and if it's done wrong, it comes off as intrusive. Yes, it does conjures concerns about crossing boundaries and causing discomfort, which might lead to a negative impression of their business. And everybody has this in the back of their mind, like, oh, I don't want to be that person and be all intrusive. That's weird, right? Well, the matter of the fact is the solution to this is focusing on providing value. This could be sharing useful information. It could be helping solve a problem or get clarity on a problem is probably even a better way to do it. Or offering an exclusive opportunity for somebody that is a fit to come and check something out. There's nothing intrusive about doing that. And if your job is to get your word out and your mission out and your brand out to people, you should be connecting with people anyways. No matter what you're doing, you always have to go outbound, whether it's with content and then getting people to come inbound. There's no such thing as inbound only. It doesn't exist anywhere, right? Somebody started something with an outbound piece of content or a message or something to trigger an ad, whatever it is, to get people to start flowing in this direction, right? So if we focus on providing value in the DM specifically, then we can really, really knock out this intrusiveness piece, right? And the best thing to start in DMs is with a compliment. So just give somebody a genuine, holistic compliment and you're gonna win at all levels. So that's the first anxiety and what to do about it. The second anxiety that we face is non-responsiveness. Nobody likes to be ghosted. Everybody hates getting ghosted. Prospects often refer to their messages that will be ignored, um, often fear that their messages uh, will be ignored or lost in the flurry of DMs that people receive every day. You get a lot of them, I get a lot of them, but hey, this makes it really easy for us to stand out, especially when we change what we're saying in our messaging. That is the key, and the anxiety is based on the concern that their outreach efforts might be a waste of time and the resources if the response rate is low. So they're thinking to themselves like, huh, I could do this work and the response is gonna be low. If they're already thinking that before they go in, it's not the right energy to move into the DM outreach game. So what do you do about this? Well, craft personalized and compelling messages. It's a very simple thing to do. Flowchat allows you to customize your outreach and follow up at scale using things like AI Assist, and it keeps your DMs from becoming just another unread message in someone's inbox. Yes, I'm biased to this, but I've been using it for years and I know how powerful it is. And just remember, a couple of pro tips here. Persistence is key. No matter what, if you get knocked down, if you can see up, you better get up, like Les Brown says, because if you're not continuing to pound down the doors and build a shield upon yourself, you're never going to get better. Don't get disheartened if your initial messages don't get responses. That just is supposed to be feedback critically for you to go back now and actually change your messages around just a little bit. So that's number two and what to do about it, right? If you are struggling with, I'm worried that other people are not going to respond to me, look at your messaging, recraft that, right? And the last major anxiety is striking the right tone, right? You don't want to be too personal. You don't want to be too broad. You don't want to be any of those things. Balancing professionalism and personal connection can be tricky, specifically when it is in the DMs, but prospects often worry about finding the right tone that doesn't come across as too stiff and formal or overly casually and unprofessional. They're anxious about maintaining their brand voice while also creating rapport with the receiver. So what do we do to actually get to a place where we can strike 
the right tone. Very simply, understanding your audience. Spend time researching their needs. Where do they hang out? What do they watch? What do they listen to? Are they on this property or that property? You know, meta properties, Facebook and Instagram. Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Discord? Where do they hang out? And the kind of communication styles, what do they resonate with? Go read some of those things and learn about that, right? Very valuable if you're going, as an example, the Dream 100 strategy. If you go find a top influencer or thought leader in your niche, because they're all over the place, look at how those influencers are talking to the same audience that you want to sell to and mimic some of that tone, some of the right tone, so you can get very close right from the start. And then, of course, you want to add your voice on the top of it. Um, our AI tech actually helps you analyze past successful interactions, also allows you to refine your brand voice and maintain a balance between professional and personal. And of course, we offer 16 live sessions every single month so that you can show up and get the right strategy. And we can test and look at results, check the data and come back and continue making changes. Again, if you're struggling with how do I get the right tone, do that, what I just shared with you. Go find a thought leader in your world, see how they act and talk to your audience that you're selling to as well, and then mimic that to start. That's a great starting point from there. Um, so again, just in summary, if you have intrusiveness concerns, focus on value. If you're having the non-responsive concerns, craft better messages. And of course, if you're looking to strike the right tone, just understand your audience better than you already do. And when you do that, I can assure you, you're going to see a big response in your game and your business is going to go like a rocket ship. So that's all I got for today. Make sure and smash that like button, share this out to somebody who needs to get better in sales. And of course, if you found some value or a nugget of wisdom that you take and you can put into your world today, please smash that subscribe button because we're trying to grow this channel more and more and more, right? That's the idea to get the word out so people can be better at sales. With that said, I love your face and I can't wait to see you next time. Ciao for now.